Look, I'm gonna cut the shit. No courses, no censorship. Today I'm going over the full journey of how I went from making nothing to $500,000 as a dumbass 17 year old. This video includes over five years of daily documenting hundreds of archives and generally my intent with this video is to just be as transparent as possible and share my story. But to understand how I got here, let me give you a recap. So as generic as it gets, I was an average kid. I did okay in school, but nothing special. And for as long as I can remember, I was completely addicted to YouTube. And when I was 11, I made my first ever YouTube video. And it was shit. But month after month, I stuck with it. I kept posting and I kept improving. So much so that at 13, I had finally crossed the threshold and got enough views to be monetized. Meaning that YouTube would pay me for each view I got on that channel. I got paid $80 that day. And honestly, that was the day I'd won because that was the hardest money I would ever make. At 14, I started freelancing random jobs online. Fiverr product photography, editing, I would literally still sample photos and then wing it in my bedroom. It took months of work, but eventually I was getting a few clients a month, making me around $200 per shoot. And I hated it. There is no way that's gonna work. Sake. This leads me on to 15 where one day I created a random YouTube channel that would post troll videos. The channel Yummers had a joking video around free Robux completely blow up. So of nothing to lose and being completely anonymous, I made more. We've come it was rinse and repeat, learning what worked and didn't work for YouTube, thumbnails, titles. November 2018, I made $300. And over a year later, January 2020, I made over $10,000 in a month. The channel was borderline, it had no integrity, and it was a matter of time before YouTube took it down. In April of 2020, Yummers got suspended. I went from making $10,000 a month to nothing. I was 16 with just shy of 100,000 saved up. And that's when in the heat of everything, I started working on this video. And that is where I left off. Pretty much completely disappearing from the internet for two years. Until today. I'm sure you're on the edge of your seat and waiting for that one. The date was September 13th, 2020. Yamas had been suspended for five months. And I was building up this business channel doing speed runs, challenges. And through consistent videos and the financial niches high pay, I was back to making $5,000 a month. And while still working on my How I Made $100,000 video, I get a DM from a long time viewer. We start chatting about the gaming scene of YouTube, talking about the dream team. When I send him an old skit I made about the dream team on some throwaway channel. I didn't know it at the time, but turns out he owned a compilation channel with 400,000 subscribers around this same group. And he thought the video was funny and offered to shout it out. I reluctantly agree and thank him for the kind gesture. The conversation ends and I go to sleep that night expecting nothing. The next day, 20,000 views on the video overnight. Oh sh**. Instantly, I get up and make a follow-up, but this time I wanted to take a different approach. You see, all videos on Minecraft were over 10 minutes, they were super serious documentary style videos. So I did the opposite. I made two to five minute videos and took the complete piss out of everything. No way, guys, we found God! I had this formula where I would take an already existing concept, 100x the stupidity, and make a video out of it. For the first time ever, I felt no responsibility to keep a channel alive. It was fun again. And that night I changed the channel's name to McYum. October was around the corner and I continued to make these dumb skits on McYum every other day until finally my $100,000 video went live. I'm so nervous for this video, man. It's just like I've spent so much time on it and I don't want it to be bad. The response was amazing. I'd worked so hard for this video and I was ecstatic. The reception on this video is so overwhelming. McYum was now getting 10 to 20,000 views a day and had around 4,000 subscribers. And this is the moment it got monetized, meaning I could make money now from that channel. October rolled around, but the idea of making another Jared West video was just draining. So I decided to look for another McYum idea when I unknowingly stumbled into a gold mine. A video called Fake Minecraft Speedruns Be Like with 3 million views. No commentary, just music and text for five minutes straight. So, I spent the next five hours making a better version of it. Oh my god! Oh my god, no way! A hundred xing the stupidity, literally on call with my brother, <laughs> breaking down every five minutes because of some stupid shit I found. And the views reflected this, but not in a way I thought they would. The most views I'd ever got on a video before was a million. I posted over 300 videos in my life and the idea of getting 10,000 views was still mind blowing to me. So when this video got one million views in six days, I knew something was up. <laughs> McYum completely blew up. I went from 5,000 to 100,000 subscribers in a week, something that had taken years beforehand. 
I would post a video and in two hours, it would get 100,000 views. My fake speedrun video now had 3 million views. TikToks were blowing up. YouTubers I had previously grown up watching were reaching out to me for collaborations. And the money side of things, something I hadn't even considered. $10,000 in seven days. This channel got a shout out two weeks ago. I continued posting daily or every other day. Ideas were flowing, things seemed effortless. Yeah, boy, I got clout. October 2020 was without a doubt my craziest month ever, bringing me to a total of $54,000 from both McYum and Jared West ad revenue. November once again started strong, McYum was still performing amazing, Jared West had gotten 100,000 subscribers. There was a slight element of what's next, but I was just enjoying the climb with sights of $100,000 months on the line. And then in the middle of November, the worst possible thing happened to McYum. I got blacklisted. So if you've gone viral super fast, YouTube will sometimes like to review your channel to make sure your views are legit, which is fine, but in doing so, they kill your channel. Overnight, half of my videos completely tanked, didn't show up in search, and my daily views got cut in fifth. And combined with this newfound pressure to stay on top, Yukyum felt like a game where every good move moves you up one, but every bad move moves you back two. So I just didn't make as many moves. I just didn't know where to take this. I'm trying to find stuff that's funny, I don't know. I was still posting about every week, but I was slowly getting into my head about videos. The videos became noticeably more stiff and its nonchalant nature slowly started to fade. November, I made $27,000 with Jared West making $7,000 even though I didn't post. December rolled around and usually this is the best month for ad revenue. However, I only posted two videos. They did fine and I got comfortable. I started thinking... I can take my time on this video, it isn't big of a deal. This was also the month I started investing into index funds and ETS, netting a small loss of $2,000. Earning $18,000 that month. And faster than I expected, 2021 rolled around. This is where I turn it around. Enough of this shit, I'm grinding my ass off this year. I'm gonna make 100k in a month. Except that, that didn't happen. Days turned into weeks, which turned into months of not uploading. The reason I started YouTube became blurred with this expectation to maintain good average views. The videos became more linear to maximize retention and get views, and I just started hating making them. <laughs> the irony is, when I did this, they still did worse. I posted once in January, and that video heavily underperformed. I was meant to be this young, inspiring entrepreneur who was proactive and would get things done and grind all day, yet I was here procrastinating a stupid mind Minecraft skit, wasting weeks at a time on social media. The next three months were honestly much of the same. February, March, April, I made forty thousand dollars. May twenty twenty one rolled around, and after a fifty day abstinence, I posted my worst performing video to date. Recycled content, limited ads, and on top of this, my stock and crypto investments weren't doing as hot anymore. My fucking stocks are losing value by the second. Oh my fucking god. Yeah, it's not fun. Something needed to change. I spoke to a YouTube friend of mine and told him my situation and the theme of overdone editing, overstimulation just kept coming up. And that's when it kind of just clicked. Just don't try as hard. It sounds wildly counterintuitive, like why would you not try as hard? But I was just making dumb Minecraft videos. It didn't matter. I started working on a video called Minecraft SMPs Be Like. I went back to basics. No fancy edits, no adjusting scripts for five hours at a time. And being this close to scrapping the video, on May 9th, I posted it. And it was my best performing video of my last 10. This shit makes no sense. Why has that worked? May 2021 went on to be one of my best months, posting weekly videos, hitting worldwide trending, and getting my first sponsorship. It may have been through finding Honey's business email and then kind of swindling myself into a promotion. It counts, it was a sponsored video. I can't expose the exact amount, but in May, I made over $80,000, collectively from ad revenue and sponsorships. It just mentally felt so great finally getting shit done again. June and July hit, and although I was kind of struggling with ideas and innovation, the videos I did post ended up still doing very well, bringing over $45,000 throughout those two months. But most importantly, I was nearing closer and closer to my all-time subscriber goal of 1 million subscribers on a YouTube channel. And next month, in August, I officially left college at 17. And August 15th, 2021, I hit 1 million subscribers on McYoung. my all-time goal for a YouTube channel. I'm so blessed to be in this position. And there's like an element of me that like can't get over the one million. But there is this like, I don't know, there's like, I don't want this to come across as like ungrateful. It was weird. It felt like everything I'd worked towards had just happened. 
It was weird. I had envisioned my life a certain way when I hit a million subscribers, yet I felt completely the same. I don't know, I didn't look past it. I have things I need to do, which I'm currently running away from. I was posting dumb two minute videos once a month, constantly procrastinating on disciplines until November, where I made a schedule, I started waking up early, getting shit done, and it was great. Boosting views, subscribers, and even getting my second sponsorship, this time paying even more than the last one. Meaning in the months of August, October, and November, I made just shy of $100,000. But there was one main problem. I wasn't enjoying it anymore. I liked the purpose behind Mikyam. I liked that initial vision, the excitement. It was just, I was just maintaining Mikyam because it was now my job. Everything's so, so mundane and routine. To try and fix this issue in July, I made another channel called Mikyam Shorts. I made it my mission on this channel to post daily 30 second skits that weren't centered around any specific topic so I could explore, I could do whatever I want with them. And again, it worked great, but if I'm being honest, as soon as I hit 100,000 subscribers, I just stopped posting as much. And just like that, before I knew it, 2022 rolled around. And as I looked upon the remains of the Jared West channel, McYum's descent into mediocrity, I decided to just take on more collaborations. I had this super dumb Regna character that I played doing comedy bits and streams and videos, eventually connecting me with some super talented people my age. And it was eye-opening, not only to just kind of develop my own personality on McYum, but just seeing these individuals do so well at my age. January and February did just over $20,000, posting the same skits I used to and just not changing much up. And in March, after one and a half years of not showing my face online at all, I did a face reveal video on McYum. And super dubious to how it would go down, the response was amazing. And with McYum's views still ticking along, my 18th birthday coming up and the $500,000 goal coming closer and closer, I had some sort of a realization. In my last video, I said money is synonymous with value. And I still full-heartedly believe that. I know most of the people watching this probably just want to make money themselves, so look, you have to pick one skill, you have to master it, you have to absolutely obsess over it. And it is going to take time. I spent three years making YouTube videos and I made $100 throughout that time. Don't let the editing fool you. That was over 50% of the journey. But in five years time, I can promise you, you'll be in a place that you couldn't even imagine. At March 23rd, 2022, I can somehow say that at the age of 17, I made a pre-tax net total of $500,000. Ridiculous. <laughs> Skip the present day, I'm 18 with just slightly under 500,000. F*** you stock market. Mikyam honestly was the most fun I've ever had on a YouTube project before. Moving forward, honestly, my focus more than anything, more so the money, is just building an authentic fan base and making shit I want to make. But yeah, if you're somehow still watching this, I appreciate it so much. Subscribe if you're new. Thank you for watching.